Hi, Saste Shira here. Uh, I was talking to Johnny Belmont, and he's looking to to build like more stop motion like animation, like clay motion, claymation, using Quill. And we're bouncing back and forward, uh, talking about how to apply a, a real clay shader on the on the Quill animation. So I kind of want to show you the workflow that I, that I came up with. It's a mix of a bunch of different techniques and the, uh, half of it is using what we covered last, on the last tutorial I made. I have my character here, I'm just going to put a plane on the ground. So on the top right menu, I'm going to change here from material to vertex the colors are pretty much what i see in quill if you if you change to flat here that's pretty much what i see in quill just create a another tab here uh, shade your editor one thing i like to do when i add the lights is go to shadow properties turn on contact shadows on the render settings here uh, shadows turn on high high bit depth here we have the all the little sausages, the thing that I showed you how to get rid of in the last tutorial. I'm gonna create an attribute node. I export uh, export it without the alpha uh, alpha split option, so I don't need to. So it's RGB instead of RGBA. If you don't have the alpha split on, you gotta type RGBA here. Okay, so the color is working there. Okay, I want this light to be a little bit more intense for now. Uh, this plane, I'm gonna add material to it too, just so it's not pure white bouncing the light back that much. And I'm just gonna copy the material to the rest of the body. I have uh, those were two separate layers, so they came. We'll have some shadows and I have the proper colors. So I'm going to duplicate the head, right click for it to snap back to, to where it was, Shift D to duplicate. I'm going to find it here, pressing dot on the numpad. And I'm going to move this to another collection so I can turn this off when I'm not using. I don't need to be on render mode for this. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go back to Studio Light. Same as before, I'm gonna add a subdivision surface node, a displace on top of that. It's huge because could export things too small. Uh, remesh, and you're gonna notice all the color is gone too with the remesh. I added a zero there to the voxel size. Looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna turn on smooth shading. Okay, we just highlight it. Now, time is for the magic, data transfer, uh, face corner data, custom normals, and let's pick the face projection here. I forgot to do one thing, so it's not going to work right away. I gotta go back here to the object properties, uh, object data properties, go to normals, and click on auto smooth. All right, it's better, also better for you to use uh, sort of the instead of the sunlight, you use like uh, area lights as your main light. That might help you a little bit with softer shadows. Well, my model could be a little bit better there. I think that would help. So if I was more careful a little bit with the how I laid the each stroke, the, this would look a little bit better. But again, I'm not intending to use like close-ups like this where you can see the those strokes. I think a close-up would be something like here. When Johnny approached me, he bought some sh some shaders, uh, some pretty cool shaders by Gemma. I can never pronounce that properly. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. 
and this is how it looks on, on his actual shader, right? But if I just apply this here, it w wouldn't work because of the ways the UVs work here, right? So, and, and the strokes and the normal thing that I did. So, let's start by adding the, the normal map. So, I'm just dropping the normal map here, changing from sRGB to non color, uh, connecting to the normal. Um, I gotta bring a normal map data. Just gonna drop that in between. Okay, I have Node Wrangler on, so Ctrl T creates a texture coordinate and a mapping uh, thing here. So I'm just gonna change from vector from vector from UV to generate it. So it's already showing because now it's applying on on. 3D space, not on the UVs, and here on uh, flat, I'm changing to box, so now it's applying like a box projection. So a good thing to do now is look for a corner where you see a seam. actually not bad out of the box but I think here it's a pretty clear seam so I just blend this and increase the blend value until those seams disappear usually around 0 0.4 0 0.3 is good enough for me I'm gonna leave it 0.5 just to be sure only because that's what I did the last time Okay, so it already looks a little bit more like clay, right? Like just by having the normal map there. But it's way too strong and way too big. So to reduce here, we have to increase 2.2. Okay, I think I'm happy with 2.2. I'm just gonna reduce the, the strength a little bit. So it's to one, let's try 0.3. That looks all right, a little bit stronger maybe. Okay, from the maps you get from here, uh, you also get like, uh, you get the normal map, you get uh, occlusion map. And first thing I do is just plug the same vector that I had there here. And then I use a mix RGB node. I leave the the color on, on the lower option, set value to 1. Connect this to the first color here. And instead of mix, multiply. And um, one way to control this, if you want to like, if you think it's too strong or like, you can always control here too, right? Like the, actually, I think it messed up. I think it should be the opposite here. Yeah. Yes, so... Huh. I always thought it was the other way around. Anyways. So, the occlusion, the color 2. And... It's already working fine. I honestly don't need to do much, but if you wanna, like, let's say, if you wanna have finer control here, uh you can always add a uh, color ramp in between and then you can do like you can have like much stronger much sharper occlusion too if you want not what I'm looking for but you can also like I don't know change the like add some tints to it if you want but again now what i'm looking for that's just showing you that there's always that option there uh all right so 
we have connected the normal and the occlusion and it's already looking like clay right uh, the other map that's provided is displacement like I mentioned and they have like a diffuse map uh, for the diffuse I'm using the actually uh, the actual vertex color that I got from from quill so I don't need that but but from that just like mixing the shaders I made a roughness map and I do want to use that so before I go too far let me just uh, Apply those values here. Same as before. Apply the vector here. And I'm gonna connect this to roughness. And it's way too strong, right? Apply the color ramp, similar to what we're doing. It can be like if you're used more used to Photoshop, it doesn't need to be a ramp, it can be like a curve modifier. And I'm just gonna crank the white more towards this way because white is rough. Actually, I'm going to bring the white a little bit. I like there. Um, still not good. So I'm going to get the black here and just lift the black. So the most shine is not as shiny as what I had on the map that I created. And I think that's maybe too far. Maybe a little bit darker here and a little bit more less there. Uh, because of our little trick for the normals, uh, roughness is always a little bit too strong, even if you, like you gotta like always push things more towards white on the roughness so it doesn't uh, so it doesn't look too shiny. You can tell like on the your uh, because we didn't do the normal trick on the uh, on his body yet, the roughness looks very different there, right? Like, it looks uh, way less shiny than on the face. Uh, let's see his shoes here. Just turn off the speckler a little bit, so it's 0.5, I'm gonna lower to, to 